Hello friends, families, and potential fans. I am Saber Mage, and I'm hungry. I'm here on my survival server, and I ran out of food, so I am going to cook up some chickens here. Maybe. But that's not the real reason we're all here today. We're here because I want to show you something that I've created. Um, it is a secure storage solution called the Obsidian Locker. Or at least that's what I've named it. So let's go check it out, shall we? The Obsidian Locker, as you might have guessed by the name, is a storage space encased in the ever blast proof obsidian. It also has a very secure entryway secured by item keys. And inside this building, I have a row of five obsidian lockers. All right, so this is one obsidian locker. Um, it is in the form that they all start out in which is open. Um, this basically means that it's not occupied and should you so choose you can claim this one as your own. Now to claim it as your own what you want to do is simply throw any random item at the colored sideways pants. When you do that you get the key here. The key for the locker is, in this scenario, colored dye. I'm sorry, dye is already colored. Dyes are colors. <laughs> the key is dye that is named. Um, in this case, OBS locker short for obsidian locker, key, and then a code for red. Um, in order for someone to open this, they have to have a dye with this exact same name. Now if you want, you can make the keys a little more secure by using um, named maps because in that case the only way you can create a copy of the key is to have the exact same map to name it the same and to copy it onto another map so basically you have to have a copy to create a copy um, that's a little more secure than the dies but the d dies are a very cost-effective solution um, so as you see, I got my die back, and in here is the I the random item I threw in, so I get my item back as well, and the obsidian locker is locked. It is sealed by these iron bars and endstone. Now you might be wondering, why endstone? Endstone is actually the game's most blast-proof block, which is pushable by pistons. All in all... You can destroy the redstone wiring of this with a blast, but you're not going to touch the stuff stored inside. So why don't we explore what's inside? How do we do that? You throw the key in the exact same spot that you threw the random item. It gives you a little jingle and opens up. Inside we have two large chests and four normal sized chests. You can access this lower one just by looking through the uh, crack there and we also have a hopper in case you're in a hurry and you just want to throw some item in, items in and run back out um, we have a furnace which I generally like to keep stocked with blaze rods so it's just ready to go um, you have a crafting table you also have an ender chest cleverly hidden above each chest is color coded so you know where to look for all your organized stuff if you are an organized person. Um, really quick. And something you might notice is that, well, it's open. And that means that anyone can take the key. I don't want someone to just take the key while I'm rummaging through my things for a short little bit. And the solution is simple. If you push that lever down, it closes the door, and it acts as if the locker is locked. 
um, while the door is closed in that way if people can throw in whatever they want they won't get the key back out of here but you can after you open it come back out and throw in an item yourself I might also point out that once the locker is locked and you do have the key people can spam whatever they want they will always get all of their items back assuming they hit the button and it will not open won't budge so you can't break it I had a friend of mine test it and you can't ender pearl into it um, and unless maybe from below if you have something below there um, you also cannot place any redstone devices on the front face of it to open it it is very secure now finally the last thing I want to show you is what if you do forget to pull this lever and someone takes your key there is a bit of a fail safe here a safety escape route and it is the ender chest in fact how is it the ender chest? well if you stand directly below it face up and throw two ender pearls can take some practice and I didn't get it and I'm out of ender pearls one second there we go and you're out so if you do get stuck in by someone um, stealing your key as long as you've got pearls on you you won't have to mine your way out you can just uh, throw some ender pearls and you're good you can then uh, find your way back around to the entrance and figure out what the heck happened to your key so now that we've explored all of the details of the obsidian locker why don't we discuss how to build it I'll see you on the other side and on the other side we are we are in a creative world and let's learn how to build an obsidian locker so these are all the items you'll need for the obsidian locker yeah this is no light project and that's why it's taken me so long to throw this tutorial video together um, this is a rough estimate of how many of each object you need for one obsidian locker um, some of these numbers are for different build um, mainly in the redstone but you will definitely need five sticky pistons um, 55 obsidian and if you um, put more than one side to side then everyone after the first will be only 54 obsidian um, yeah so take a good look those are roughly the numbers you'll need to make it look about how I did and on with the building so the first thing you want to do is pick out the spot you want your door to be on so let's say we want our door right here at this block what you want to do then is dig down four blocks to the left of the door take your five droppers build them all the way up and have your last one facing outward then on the other side of the door you want to dig down two blocks um, jump up and place your hopper so that's facing inward to this block and we'll take care of that later and then what you want is to place a half slab right there okay then you'll want your hopper cart um, a basic building block and some rail as well as a sticky piston and a torch or something else to trigger the sticky piston And in my case, I want to use a sideways log. 
Alright, so you build a block directly on top of your half slab. You place some cart track there, mine cart track. Put a mine cart on it, break it all. That just makes it so that the mine cart sits in there nice and snug. From there, you want to put your sideways log and you want to put your sticky piston facing down and then place a torch next to it to trigger it sorry this one doesn't have to be sticky it's actually more convenient if it's not, but since we're already using pistons in this project, it may as well be sticky. So you just break the piston at this point, and your block stays. The cart, yes, okay. And that is the basic setup for the door so far. Let's make it look a, look a little better here. throw some some goodness around it mm -hmm. and this is just how I did my own build you can kind of personalize it up if you want so I had the stairs there and you have your one instance of iron bars right there and it's pretty much time to start building the inside of the locker um, let's see so what you'll want to do is place two sticky pistons facing this way there and two there you are also going to want your obsidian at this point and no not sandstone and your end stone got your two end stone um, your four end stone blocks for the door place your obsidian at this point you'll want the obsidian flooring as well and ceiling all right, I messed up the inside of the obsidian locker the first time around, so I've cut to this now. We are going to build it right. So we've already got our pistons in and the end stone. And we do need a piston up there still. That can wait. So what you want to do is place another obsidian there. Obsidian, obsidian, obsidian ceiling. Okay. Then what you want is a 3x3 three three area. Shaped like a U of obsidian. Then the center two blocks, you dig two down. Do some more obsidian there. You want to make your wall out of obsidian, a space for the furnace. and a space for the crafting table and you'll want your ceiling with the space for the ender chest very good and you'll want to go around to the outside place blocks like so and if you want to save a little space up here you can uh, cut out the furnace and or the crafting table it's up to you but it won't save you any space underground so no matter what you'll always need the same amount of space underground 
This is pretty much the template for the inside. Let's get our chests in there, shall we? So you want chests, as I said before, trap chests, and your ender chest. So you have one chest here. I had a hopper pointing into it. Also want another chest on top of it. Two trap chests like that is how I did it. And then more chests. Hmm. Hmm. Finally. I had my item frames to mark the chest colors. And you can choose whichever blocks you want to identify the chests with. Put them in the item frames. Stick a furnace there, crafting table there. Put our ender chest up there. And what I like to do with the ender chest is to use another brick slab to top it. It's nice and dark so it blends in well and it still allows you to open the chest from underneath whereas any solid block one of course. And that is it for the inside build mostly. Um, one other thing we're gonna want to do is to put a sticky piston up here like so. So now, let's get to building the messy, messy redstone underneath, shall we? Are you scared? Because you should be. This is definitely going to be a long tutorial. So what you want to do is give yourself two blocks. Well, technically three blocks from the door, two blocks between you and the door horizontally and vertically. This is where you want to dig down and start hollowing out ground underneath your obsidian locker for all the redstone. Um, you want to make this eight wide, so travel eight in that direction. Four tall, so four um, downward after this, so you want the space underground. Um, so you'll want to go down five blocks total and eleven deep. So 10 more blocks in that direction. So I'm going to do that real quick, and I will get back to you when we've got that space hollowed out. And by the way, I'm in the middle of hollowing this out, and I just want to warn you, be sure to be careful to leave your droppers and your hopper intact as you hollow it out. Alright, I have hollowed out my space underneath my obsidian locker, and let's continue. The first thing we want to do is build our item elevator, essentially. Um, this one's a little different from my own design, just because of space restrictions. Um, you can use my design uh, my more efficient item elevator design with this and it'll work and it'll be quieter and a little bit faster but it'll require an extra block of space this way and in my case I wanted them I wanted to be able to tile I, um, obsidian lockers as close as possible to each other horizontally so I opted for this other solution so we have a block here. We want to face a comparator out from mm -hmm. <laughs> the dropper. <laughs> Losing my words. And then place a stone block off of off from there. You do then want a torch here. 
another block on top of that torch. And you want one redstone repeater like so. From there you want another stone block there. A torch here and a torch there. And another block of stone there. You know, it doesn't have to be stone, that's just my preference. Some redstone there. Another block. Another repeater. Stone. Torch. And one more torch. And that is the circuit for getting items up into that last hot dropper up there. So just to demonstrate, throw my item in there. Again, lots of clicking noise. I know it's not the most pleasant to thing to hear. Hmm. Did I do something wrong? I must have. Let me double check. All right, figured out the problem. Um, for one thing, this should not have been in subtraction mode. Or at least it doesn't need to be. And for another, this needs to be on a two tick delay. So that is our item elevator. And what we want to do from here is to get ourselves a chest. Place it here. Point a hopper into it. Like that. We also want two hoppers pointing in that direction from there. And another hopper pointing down there, like so. A little backward C shape there. Mm -hmm. An item came through here, I know it. And now that we have built the backward C shape of hoppers, let's continue on with the messy redstone. You will want two upward half slabs, like so, but before you place that one, you actually want to place a comparator facing away from that hopper. You'll want another comparator on another half slab there. And you will want stone blocks like so. Redstone, those two blocks, and bring out stone blocks like this. You'll want another repeater here. And once we've placed this repeater, we want to set it to a four tick delay. Up here, we will place two redstone. And it will lead into one block. Now we will deal with this, um, what this triggers later on, just a little later on. Okay, from here, we want, I replaced my torch. We want to put a redstone torch right there. 
and we want to have blocks spiraling down like so and you lead the redstone up them and that locks this hopper this hopper is where we are going to keep the keys which will be compared to when you throw a key in um, instead of going down here because this hopper will be locked you'll see um, it will immediately be able to go left instead and into this hopper which has all the extra keys and it will stop there because it's locked by this anyway let's keep building the circuit and you'll see it slowly form we actually yes so we want one block like so and we want this on a four tick delay bring this out and one torch here we also want one top slab here and a comparator facing out from this hopper and into a block and onto this wire and a torch right there So we have this done. And there's a little more to do. But first let's head over here where we left off with this. So what we want here is a torch and one block, redstone. And we want to lead this redstone up. And back over. And into those two pistons. And we also want the redstone to go there. And, as you can see, the door is now in the locked position. And this will serve us well. So the deal with this is that you'll have your keys in this hopper. You'll have your extra keys in here. As soon as this goes from 22 key objects to 23, which is when the user inputs a key, this signal strength changes from 1 to 2 which then reaches this repeater triggers this redstone causes this torch to turn off and all of the pistons to open and the way that the key input works is that the user inputs a key, if it's a key, it this hopper is locked, so it will not be able to flow downward right away, but it will be able to flow left because it's a key and this is full of keys. Um, if it is not a key, then it can't flow left, and this delayed circuit will unlock this hopper, allow the um, random item to flow through and back up through the droppers mm -hmm. so we can patch this back up there are just a few more elements left in the circuit but before we get to those let's go ahead and make our keys 
So in this case, I'm going to use cyan dye, and I need to head over to my anvil, which is not in this crater, but that crater. We have a total of 23 cyan dyes, and we want to name them something. If I use the template I showed you, it will be obs locker key and say CY then you take your named keys and you bring them back over. What you want to do then put one key in each of these slots and the rest in here. And as you heard, the pistons open because it's now as if the user's key is inside the locker. You can get inside all as well. Let's uh, throw a little light in here. Mm -hmm. And I do believe it should be fully functional at this point. We got our torch back. And we're going to want our button. And we got our key back. And if we want to open it, we just throw it in. The locking mechanism works perfectly. Now we're going to add the lever, the safety lever. So you want to put it right there. Um, there really aren't any other positions that will work. Unless you adjust the redstone above, which is kind of complicated. So you may as well just put it there. That lever is on this block, so it'll power all of this. Thus closing the door. But it doesn't yet keep users from taking your key. So there's some additional work we need to do to make that happen. And what we want to do to keep people from taking your key is this. We need to have a block here to separate these two redstone lines. Um, the lever will power, since it's on this block, it will power both here and here. And we will need one more block down. Redstone there, torch here, two blocks down from the torch, want some stone or whichever block you're building with, and drag this over, I want to dig down one here, dig two blocks there, and connect it to that line. <laughs> and thanks to this, it can connect. Thanks to the fact that that is a top hat slab. Um, it's a little complicated, but all of the torches you see feeding into this one wire are things that are saying basically I'm back guys and I apologize for all the cuts just having lots of technical difficulties haven't exactly done a tutorial this long before and it's kinda crazy but as I was explaining before every torch that leads that connects to this line is basically saying 
if I'm lit, you cannot give the player the key. Which means if that lever is pulled, this torch will be lit. And so as long as the lever is pulled, no key will be given to a player on the outside. Mm -hmm. There's lots of complicated little intricate details. Now that we have everything working, why don't we add a little bit more fun to it? And that's the sounds you heard before. For that, we're going to want note blocks, of course. So what I do is I have a note block here, and one here. They do not need blocks under them, that gives them the piano sound if you just use air. One repeater on a one tick delay, so it happens as quickly as possible. And one on a delay such as that. Two ticks. And this is going to do go dun dun when the door opens, so... I did like a doorbell type sound. Let's go with. Yep. So now. When we throw, we can throw our key in, and it now makes that nice doorbell sound right before it opens to confirm that you have indeed input the key. Alright, and let's add the. Um, it's kind of the air sound, but it actually plays whenever an item passes through here at all. So you just want to block here. All right, and you want wood underneath it. Mm -hmm. That'll do, that'll be a good tone. Throw your random item in. And you get the key and your random item back. And you can throw your key. In. And it opens. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. The Obsidian Locker. You now know how to build it. You can put it in your world. You can put lots of them in your world for people to safely and securely store their things. I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it will allow you to prosper for many years to come. And I am out. Later on. Go check my phone. Checking my phone. And part of the video that'll be cut. Um, it's a little complicated, but all of the torches you see feeding into this one wire are things that are saying basically, <laughs> I'm going to burn the earth. <laughs> okay.
crying. But not really, because that'd be embarrassing. <laughs> 